You know, as many of you know, we, along with America, do have a suicide problem. Too many soldiers are taking their lives or attempting to do so. It's hard to believe that last year we lost about a company's worth of soldiers to suicide. It's distressing to think about that and what that does for our organization in terms of readiness and the personal impact that that has on the lives of those family members, the friends, the colleagues uh, of, those, uh, of those Americans. So September is Suicide Awareness Month, and it provides us all the opportunity to reassess what we're doing personally for ourselves, as well as for our friends, our families, and our colleagues. As the acting director, I have a responsibility to ensure that we're doing everything we can to reach out to soldiers that are struggling with suicide within our ranks. I think it starts with each one of us, and we can ask ourselves some tough questions at times. How am I doing? What are the stressors that are going on in my life? Am I drinking too much? Am I getting enough sleep? Am I comfortable talking to others about issues that, are, that I'm facing each and every day? And do I know where to get help? And am I comfortable in seeking out that help when I need it? And I want to be clear that there should be no stigma or shame associated with seeking out help. As an organization, that's part of our responsibility is to create that environment where someone that is in a point of need and needs some help feels comfortable talking to someone. And then that person that they're talking to is equipped to help that person get help. So our goal as an organization is to ensure that our soldiers, our civilian workforce feels comfortable reaching out to get the assistance that they need. In the military, we tend to stress, use the chain of command, use the chain of command. But in the area of suicide prevention, I think that we need to deviate from that and allow people to go wherever they feel most comfortable. Whoever that person is, go directly to them to seek help, whether that's in your chain of command or not. I think that's important for us. Ultimately, I think our responsibility is to know each other, know what's going on in each other's lives, be able to ask someone if they're in crisis, provide care to them, and escort them to help. That's ultimately our responsibility, and if we're successful in doing that, I think we'll be successful in preventing suicides within our ranks. We need to ensure that we take the problem seriously and give it the attention it deserves. So I vow to continue to fight for funding for those programs that allow us to attack this problem within our ranks. And I also pledge to continue my efforts to remove any notion of stigma for seeking help. It's simply unacceptable to place any barriers, real or perceived, to those that are trying to get assistance. I want to remind everyone that we all have a reason to live. We all have value, both to ourselves and to others. Now, every Wednesday this month, starting today, all of us will have the opportunity to record our reason for living and share it with others who may need encouragement. stigma and everybody knows our policy is not to stigmatize anybody who is seeking help. Um, you don't get punished for it or penalized for it on your security clearance and commanders are not allowed to punish anybody just for seeking behavioral health treatment. I work at TAPS which is the Tragedy Assistance Program for Survivors and we care for about 4,000 family members, battle buddies, friends who have lost a loved one to suicide in the military. Not only when a soldier dies do we lose that person, but we're three to five times more likely to lose their loved ones to suicide. So at TAPS we use a lot of uh, post prevention. we care for the survivors, and in a way that is suicide prevention in itself. This month and this week uh, marks two and a half years for me since I lost my beloved husband, Ian Morrison, who was a captain in the Army, an Apache pilot and West Point grad, to suicide.
name is Major Agatha Tyson. I'm the Suicide Prevention Program Manager for the Army National Guard. And this month is Suicide Prevention Month. So what we just did was a Suicide Prevention Month kickoff uh, with General Lyons and we had a surviving spouse who currently works at TAPS. Um, we have several events planned for the month in observation of Suicide Prevention Month. Um, this is something that is observed DOD-wide um, and actually September 10th is observed globally as World Suicide Prevention Day. And so in step with that, the Army National Guard have also observed Suicide Prevention Month. All the states are doing something to observe, whether that's having guest speakers, additional intervention training, panels, 5Ks, awareness events, things like that. Um, and here at AHS, we're also doing the same thing. We um, are doing, hitting it at many levels. So we're also doing a suicide intervention training on September 18th and 19th, um, which is called ASSIST. We are having a suicide survivors panel on the 16th for people to be able to come and process their own questions, um, sometimes their own pain, so people can ask questions, get feedback, find the way ahead, find hope. Um, and then all around the building we've got interactive, um, we've got the PMCS form, the Personal Maintenance Checks and Services form, um, where people can kind of fill out and do a self-assessment and find help before they get to a point where they're in crisis. Uh, we've got the reasons for living, which people can write down their own reasons for living, get a picture and get them put up on the monitor so they can kind of share their own reason for living and have it perpetuated um, and encourage others. And we also have ads up in the bathrooms of hotlines, peer support lines, um, and just our general awareness posters as well. So it's kind of permeating that, encouraging people to seek help and making it a topic that is not taboo to talk about so that if somebody's thinking about it, they can reach out for help. This is important to me um, because I'm a soldier. Um, I've personally struggled and people have been there to help me. And I know, so I know what that's like. And so you multiply that last year by 120 completed suicides that we know about. And that's a lot of pain. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. There are many more people who are thinking about it and who have attempted it and even more who are affected by those who are thinking about it, who, those who have attempted. And then even more people who are, may not be thinking about suicide but are struggling in some way. And we have, in the Army, we have all the resources to deal with those things, both to care for you after you're injured and to make you stronger, give you a sense of purpose, make you a better overall person, soldier, leader, partner, spouse, son or daughter. So um, that, that's really important to me. That's what gets me up in the morning. Um, when I said on the stage, my reason for living is love in relationships. It's, it's all about relationships and it's, it's that love that drives us all. I'm going to treat it like I would treat a heart attack with the same seriousness and I'm going to get you to somebody who can make that assessment. And that's what I encourage people to do, to make the call to 1-800-273-TALK. Um, that's the military crisis line. Um, if they need peer support, there's Vets for Warriors, which is 855-VET-TALK. Um, and there are, and there's always 911 in the emergency room. So if just if somebody might get mad at them, that's another question that we frequently get. It's better to they be mad than dead. That's what it comes down to. This is this is the top of everybody's radar. This this is literally life or death. This is a readiness issue. This is this is everything. This is when a soldier dies, that's not only the loss of the soldier, but it's the impact on the unit and the impact on the family, the impact on the community. It has a huge ripple effect. So it, 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 makes, an, it makes a difference. Even if somebody is thinking of suicide and thinking that they feel worthless and hopeless, um, where, they, where they're feeling worthless, um, their death would always impact, have a huge impact on people, um, regardless of how they currently feel about themselves. My name is Rebecca Morrison and I work for TAPS, which is the Tragedy Assistance Program for Survivors, and we care for families of fallen military. So TAPS provides 24-7 um, completely free care to families of fallen military, regardless of their relationship to the loved one or regardless of how they died. So we do connections to counseling, peer support, um, we do um, casework if they have issues um, with you know legal issues and things like that we connect them to casework help and we have a specific program for suicide survivors um, we also do retreats and seminars nationwide we have great uh, we have great returns and 
you know, you can really see that in our peer mentor program because so many people sign up to go to the trainings and, and you have to be 18 months out and you see like a huge change in people from the minute they come in to the minute they get out. I mean, it's very comparable to peer support in the military. You know, you just need someone who understands what you're going through and with this specific population, when you lose a loved one in the military, you sort of lose your family because that was, you know, your existence was that person's spouse or that person's, you know, that was your family. And when you lose them, and then you also lose them to suicide, there's shame and stigma attached. And we kind of break through that and provide a happy, uh, you know, a warm place for them to land. I know exactly how this program works and why it works, because it worked for me. Um, I lost my husband, who was an Army captain, um, two and a half years ago to suicide. And um, didn't, I didn't know what to do. You know, I was young and had to leave my home and everything that I had, my job, everything. and. Taps. I just uh, randomly found the number from a counselor and called in the middle of the night and actually was connected to the founder, Bonnie Carroll, and then she connected me to a woman who um, had also lost her helicopter pilot husband nine years ago to suicide. And that was my you know, initial connection and she led me the whole way and she's now my superior. So um, it fundamentally takes people back from the brink of suicide themselves and brings them to a place where they can live again and help, uh, has helped me find a new normal and actually a life where I can have happiness and joy. Yeah, it's, um, it's sort of like uh, I didn't know what to do with this tragedy and I didn't know where to, you know, how to make something positive out of it because it was probably the most thing, worst thing that I could ever imagine happening to me and to my husband and I sort of feel that through his death, he's able to, his legacy is saving other lives. So if I can be the mouthpiece for that, then, you know, then that's perfect.